Oh my gosh, that was so good. I cannot believe we saw so many octopus. It was incredible. I'm gonna sit down and I can tell you all about it. <laughs> Okay, so I've officially arrived in Cornwall. Uh, I'm in a place called Porth Kerris. It's a small cove and here a typical dive looks like 10 metres. Lovely flat calm day like today. You get small gullies and crevices, kelp beds and a lovely sandy bottom. But I'm not just here for the calm conditions and the well-known site. I'm actually here for what's been named the octopus boom. Over the past few months, there's been huge news around a large number of octopus arriving on UK shores. I'm not really sure what to expect, but I've driven four hours from Wales down to Cornwall to this one cove to try and see if I can actually find out more about this octopus boom and actually get to see some for myself. So this is Port Kerris, lovely little cove. You weave down these Cornish lanes to this absolutely beautiful place and it's really calm here it's actually a really popular dive spot because more often than not you've got really good conditions the depth of this dive is, is actually not that deep it's around we'll probably head to around 10 to 15 meters in search for these octopus but i'm excited i mean i've had minimal time in the water with common octopus in the uk and despite their name they're actually quite hard to spot unless something like this happens the octopus boom and I say octopus boom because they come to UK waters every year, but it's incredibly rare to have them on this number and on this scale. But one of the questions that everyone is asking is why are they here in such big numbers? And it's all to do with warming seas. Common octopus typically can be found in warmer waters across the Mediterranean, but as we've had more and more marine heat waves every year, and this year in particular, they are expanding their range northward. So this year, our marine heat wave started early March and has gone on to May and even now here in June, which is one of the longest and earliest recorded heat waves that we've had here in UK waters. So what that means is that range of the octopus now is much bigger, it's much further north, and they're taking advantage of the food availability of breeding grounds, of new habitat, and that's why we're having them here in such big numbers. To help me find the octopus, I'm diving with my friend Cruz. Hello! He has years of experience and knows this area like the back of his hand. This is the man of the hour. <laughs> How are we doing? How does it feel to be on camera? Terrible. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? <laughs> My dreams have come true. I get to I get to brief the internet. Do you hate this or do you love this? Shall we go have a look? You gotta come this way. We gotta go have a look. So what we're gonna do, uh, beach entry, we'll come down there. There's that big rock over there. That's where the octopus are gonna be. So it seems more likely than not we'll have some sort of interaction out by that big rock. We'll be using twin 12s, plenty of gas there. The goal is to be as underwater as long as we can be underwater for. Your fingers are gonna fall off before you run out of gas. Even though it's the summer, for us, the water is still cold. So to maximize our time and give us the best chance of seeing octopus, we're diving in dry suits. We call this an elegant dance. <laughs> You're not making this look graceful. Oh God, you don't want a grace. <laughs> Style. This is the least glamorous bit. <laughs> Get it over your forehead. You're so close. Is this one of us? Yeah. Oh, God, you have to Oh. Fourth Garris, Lizzie Daly. She's already ready. Look at her go. Any any sweet words of wisdom? How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Gee, Paul. How many? Ten tickles. 
No. Okay. We'll move past it. As we descend down to the rocks, the visibility isn't ideal. But after an hour of searching, finally I get my first glimpse hiding in the kelp. After only seeing photographs of these fascinating creatures in UK waters, it is incredible to be having an encounter like this. This is most definitely an octopus boom. When they start to swim, that's when you get a chance to see how amazing these animals really are. glide through the water, truly alien-like, using their siphons to propel themselves. Octopus have a unique nervous system with a central brain connected to each of their eight arms, allowing for incredible control and multitasking abilities in the water. And there wasn't just one down there. Down in the kelp, I saw dozens of them. Well, we found them. <laughs> we found all of them. We found every octopus. Every octopus in the sea. In the possible sea! Ah. So, as you can tell from my face, we've just come up and had the most incredible few hours. I think, I don't even know what the time is, but we got in the water around 4.30. I think it must be close to 7. Um, yeah, I had an incredible few hours, um, started out with not really much action, just one octopus and then after about half an hour we all of a sudden came across, as we went down to around 16 metres, we came across about seven, eight of these octopus all hiding in the kelp. I was following this one individual that just seemed to be really chilled, really relaxed, when it kind of went straight for another octopus, inked, and then the, the other octopus then headed off um, before just carrying on. And we stuck with this one octopus for probably about 15 minutes. Um, yeah, such intelligent animals. You can really see how they look back at you with those incredible eyes and 
you know, depending on where we actually saw the octopus, whether it was against a bit of rock in a crevice against the kelp, it totally changed their overall appearance and their, their shape and their color, which was incredible to see in real time. Um, I'm gonna deep puff for a bit. We're gonna just take a moment here. How are you feeling, Cruz? That's really good. Yeah? Yeah. Good diving? Yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. He's out of breath. He's out of breath. And this is uh, all just kind of waiting. What are we going to do? Just wait for a little while and... Wait for a bit. I'll move some gas from my cylinders to your cylinders because you've managed to use... How much did I use? A lot. We did a two hour dive though. We did do a two hour dive. To be fair. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And we didn't get cold. I'm not cold at all. No. Yeah. No. So yeah, just move a bit of, move a bit of air. Is the plan to go back in, do you think? Plans to go back in, I reckon. We'll go right to the back of the rock where we saw them all. Plop in. Yeah, probably get another 20 minutes, half an hour. Perfect. If I don't suck through air again. Try, try not to do that again. I just get too excited. <laughs> On the second dive, I'm reminded what a privilege it is to be seeing these animals so up close. To share the water with them, right here on my doorstep. Okay. I've had a minute <laughs> to just just go over what on earth just happened. That was extraordinary. I never thought I'd see so many octopus all in one place. You know, as the name suggests, there is a boom of the species here, but this does leave us to question what this means for our coasts and for our natural environments. Since the octopus boom has happened, there's been various reports across the UK of local fishermen being directly impacted by these octopus. As an example, they're going straight into lobster pots and clearing them out, eating everything there. Now, local fishing communities are a big part of, of UK history and they have been for generations. We have sustainably fished in pockets across the UK. Local fishing communities are already facing huge pressures from trawlers and industry and so on top of that now they have changing environments and warming seas and the introduction of new opportunistic predators that are taking advantage of course they will it's their environment they live in the sea they're moving up north and if there's all this food available then of course naturally they're going to eat it but this does put an additional pressure on the people that live along these coasts so this is a new thing is this going to be a new reality? Are we going to have to learn how to live alongside more kind of warmer dependent species such as the octopus? The broader ecological question is, what does this mean for our natural environment? How will it affect the food web? They're a brilliant, sophisticated predator. How will they outcompete potentially other predators? And also the prey that exists here, are they going to be able to keep up with the number of octopus actually here hunting and doing what they do best? Now I know a lot of people switch off when it comes to climate change, but these warmer seas are not really a surprise to be honest, and they may even become our new reality. We're seeing these trends over the years. This year in particular is unprecedented, but I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the new normal, which leaves us to question, what do our seas look like in the future? How are we going to be able to cope with this rapid change? And are our species gonna be able to cope? I always try and stay as positive as possible about this kind of thing, but this is right here on our shores, underwater, just you know, 100 meters away from me. It's a tangible change. It directly impacts all of us. It's quite hard to see. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing to have had that encounter. I'm in awe of octopus. They are just incredible. But the other side of me feels devastated that this is potentially the new reality. And so many people find the idea of climate change quite hard to grasp, but here we are filming it on our shores, in our waters. It's potentially the new reality. 
And it's something that I think we're all gonna have to wrap our heads around. So if you watch this video, I want you to take away firstly the beauty and the wonder of a species like an octopus, but also think about what this means for our seas and for the future of our oceans globally. We know there's huge pressures across the world on our oceans, but we'll just have to see how this story continues from here.